Hello, Pounder Bee folks. This is Paul, your friendly program facilitator, and today it's storybook time. And today's story is, check it out, Where the Wild Things Are with Max. Yeah, it's going to be a good story. Here we go. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. Look what he's doing. <laughs> that guy's a little mischievous for sure. His mother called him Wild Thing. And Max said, I'm going to eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. No supper for this guy. Check it out. No supper at all. That's what happens when you get a little wild. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. Look at this. A forest is growing in his room. That's amazing. And it grew. Look, it's still growing. Ha. Nuts. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines. All these vines hanging down. And the walls became the world all around him. Look at his room now. He's got a forest in his room. <laughs> Man, what a cool, cool night. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. Oh, he gets a boat. And he sailed off through the night and into the next day. Check this out. Man, that would be so much fun. And in and out of weeks and almost over a whole year to where the wild things are. Here they are. Wild things. They're coming at you. And when he came to the place where the wild things are and they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes, roly poly eyes, and showed their terrible claws. <laughs> look at this. Man, those guys look pretty freaky. <laughs> Till Max said, Be still, you wild things, and tame them with a magic trick of staring into their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. Check it out. These guys are freaked. Yeah, he got them good. And made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. There he is. He's the king. And they're about to rumpus it up. Ha ha ha. Man, this is neat. Whoa, check out this rumpus. Looks like they're doing it at night time. That looks like a lot of fun. Mmm. Oh, now they're hanging off the trees. That's a cool looking rumpus to me. <laughs> ah, now they're doing kind of like piggybacks and stuff like that. Man, that's a great rumpus party for sure. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. I wonder who that could be. Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. Mmm. Smelled like supper to me. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. This is what he gave up. That's what he did. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you too. And Max said, No. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth 
and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. <laughs> but Max stepped into his private boat again and waved goodbye. Check it out. He's saying bye bye, wild things. <laughs> and sailed back over a year, and in and out of weeks, and through a day. Looks like it's night time. He's coming home. And into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. Man, I'd be hungry too. I'm glad that supper's right there. It's a better time for my supper, I think. Guess what? The supper was still hot. <laughs> no picture. And guess what? I'm smelling a bit of supper, so I think I'm going to leave it there. That was a great story, and I hope you keep the wild in you alive too. See you later, folks.